Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. We're at the St. Paul Ice Show, and today we're talking with Paul Gazzoni from Minnesota Made Outdoors. And Paul, what we really want to talk to you about today is the Panfish League, Minnesota Made Outdoors. You've been on the podcast before talking some different tips and techniques, but we want to talk about what it is that you do in ice fishing. Sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself first. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, anytime we have a, t- a chance to... Uh, Talk, talk about Minnesota Made and kind of what we're doing as a, as a group. Um, appreciate it. So thank you for that. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I am uh, a tournament director uh, for Minnesota Made Outdoors. Uh, my partner Jake Kuchenmeister and I started Minnesota Made <clears throat> seven years ago. And we really started it because uh, we wanted to uh, fish competitively, but we couldn't get into a circuit or a league or a group um because uh, at the time the ultimate pan fishing league was really the only one around and uh matt johnson <clears throat> who's one of our mentors um and clam a, a huge sponsor um said you know what man we got a waiting list um so we can put you on it and uh jake and i kind of looked at each other and we're like well let's let's do this ourselves kind of thing um so minnesota made started um with i think eight teams and really our goal was just to get together with guys that were cut from the same cloth and uh and learn uh new lakes new spots new techniques um and it's grown into um uh, 30 teams so 60 guys and gals this year um that again i mean really our mission is just to um i don't want to call it a fraternity but that's really what it kind kind of starts to feel like. You you I've gained so many friendships, um, and um, I, I I can honestly say that I would I would, you know, I I'd go fishing with these guys now. We hang out together now. We have a beer here and there, and so um, I've gained a lot of friendships and a lot of knowledge just from putting this together, and it's growing pretty organically. So, in a nutshell, that's that's kind of what we do. Mm-hmm. We put on four events per year all winter. Um, <clears throat> two in January, two in February. Um, there, it's panfish, so we target uh, crappies and bluegills, and um, the goal is to bring um, <clears throat> seven crappies and seven bluegills to uh, a weigh-in, and we see where we stack up against our competition. So, um, it's uh, oftentimes you got to be on that lake for a day or two if you're lucky (laughs) beforehand to kind of scout spots um you know talk to uh your your partner because there's teams of two and oftentimes you're fishing together but sometimes you know i gotta get out on saturday when my partner can't he's like i can get out friday night from four to eight and and then you just kind of compare notes um but best case scenario you're kind of dissecting and looking at things together and going okay where do we where do we give our chance or give ourselves the best chance to uh, catch some quality panfish um and then at the end of the event we have a live weigh-in on facebook so um you can find us on just by searching minnesota made outdoors um or you can go to minnesotamadeoutdoors.com and we will will essentially broadcast what took place that day and so guys bring their fish to the table we weigh them we talk about what worked what didn't we poke fun at each other because we're friends um and uh (laughs) nothing ever goes particularly as planned there's always a a hitch um and uh and really that's kind of where um you go to bat for each other and uh fix the sled if it gets broken down on the ice or you know help a guy out because he ran out of plastics or whatever, whatever it is so um that's in a nutshell that's minnesota made outdoors is yeah. um, but i've got more that i want to talk about on one more plug right. but i'll let you i'll let you take the conversation back because i'm i'm talking too much <laughs> well uh, we were i was actually going to talk to you about that facebook way and i've got a couple of friends in the league so i like to watch who are they alan mario alan mario that's right yeah alan mario 
and they will be on the podcast as well. I already interviewed them this morning. Cool, man. But uh, And they mentioned, we actually talked a little bit about the league then okay. in, that, in that conversation as well. They're awesome dudes. But uh, I really like watching your way in just because there is so much interaction and you guys are giving each other grief. And yeah. it, it's it's fun to watch. There's a lot of people doing Facebook Lives for those types of things. Yep. And a lot of times it's really stale and it's not very fun to watch. But yeah. yours is really fun to watch. It's a challenge. Because if it's negative 20 and guys have been on the ice since 7.30 in the morning, sometimes, you know, the, the bite's tough. You got you to gotta try to keep it light a little bit, and that's, that's really the challenge. But we do our best to um, highlight the guys in the league, man, and that's what makes it special is the guys. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the guys. Oh man, um, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting because there's, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of great anglers. Um, um, the first guy that comes to mind uh, is a buddy of mine. His name is Leif Nerson. I've been fishing since Leif when, uh, with Leif since we were kindergartners. Um, so he's, you know, I consider him one of my best friends. Unfortunately, he's not my partner. He's got another partner, uh, Nick Mueller, and they're, um, they've been a huge staple in our league uh, for many years. Um, <clears throat> Jack and Jeremy are our two-time defending team of the year. They're they're um, young, they're smart, they work hard, and they're tough to beat because um, they spend a lot of time. They're dedicated to <clears throat> to learning, and and the, I mean, I picked it up somewhere, sometime from someone. The difference between professionals and amateurs is time. Right. And I believe that, um, obviously, if you're learning um, at the same time. But um, a couple of guys that um, I respect, uh, Dan Rawlings and Scott Borsma, um, hopefully they listen to this. Um, I've, uh, it's t They're another team that's tough to beat. Um, I love talking to those guys. I've learned a lot from them. Um, man, I'm missing a bunch. But we've got guys that have been with us for a long time. Um, guys like um, Tony Dahlberg and Kyle Rick who've been with us for I think four or five years and then we pick up um, probably four or five new teams a year just because life happens mm -hmm. and guys need to not commit themselves to doing that four weekends out of the year and and uh, you know and they have new baby or move or want to fish walleyes or something like that so and we've got the gamut of um, what I would call competitive, experienced tournament anglers, guys that are there to have fun, um, father, son teams um, that, I mean, man, I wish I could get out and I asked with my dad. Right. Um, he never gets out on the ice with me. I'm making a point to get out uh, with him this year. But um, And then we've got, for the first time this year, a uh, husband-wife team so that's going to add a really cool dynamic i think and sarah joe is a member of the women anglers in minnesota um so just i things are really starting to to really spread out and blow up yeah a lot of cool stuff one thing i want to ask you about last year i fished a tournament for the first time yep. and i would consider myself a very average angler we're doing a lot of show at the show and sometimes people walk in <laughs> we're gonna lock good. the door here real quick it's all good um, I would I would consider myself an average angler. I'm I'm not a guy like you or some of the people in your league. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to do this for fun, just to see where I'm at. So I got in this tournament and got absolutely smoked in it. And what do you what are some of the things that people that are come to your league for the first time? What are they experiencing in the difference between kind of recreational fishing to go into some like tournament angling? So. <clears throat> First, I consider myself a pretty average angler too. Okay. <laughs> um, I've always um, looked at my at myself and said, if I if I'm willing to work harder than the guy next to me, um, sometimes I'm going to finish ahead of him. But it's really not about that. Um, I was going to ask you. I bet you learned something. Oh, for sure, I right? learned a lot. And so, if you're, I, I tell the guys that are new to tournament fishing. Um, to keep your head on a swivel and ask questions because <clears throat> I've definitely failed um, in, in my fair share of tournament experiences, but is it considered a failure if I learn something, right? So if I can say to a guy, hey man, I was 
15 feet away from you or 45 feet away from you and, and you were killing them and I had a hard time, I'm gonna ask that guy what worked for him. Some guys will tell you exactly what it is. You know, I'm using a four mil drop kick and, a, and an orange panfish plastics. And, I, and I'm going, huh, well, I'm, I should probably switch to plastics from meat or I should have made that switch. Um, some other things that, that I guess um, have, have I have learned um, chasing panfish is that you do not need to fish basins. Um, oftentimes, and we talked about this during our first, po first podcast, um, if we're looking for um, just to get on a bunch of fish, yeah, I mean, we're going to we're gonna find a big school of crappies in a basin, but um, most times when you're tournament angling, <clears throat> um, my, my first recommendation would be to cut out anything that's over 15 feet deep and really find those the, the fish that are in the weeds because not not only is it going to be more rewarding um, to find the predators the ones that are rogue the ones that are they're not maybe schooled up so you got to move up move around a little bit more um, but i think the quality fish are shallow to be honest with you um, and then the other thing is don't shack up get a good suit a good pair of boots tie four rods get your hand warmers out be mobile and move um and deal with it right. um because if you're willing to put the time and the effort in you're you're gonna do way better than well this is the spot man we're gonna shack up here and they're gonna come and go that that's true mm -hmm. but um to to consistently catch fish all day and and Mind you, 99% of the fish that we're catching, we're putting back. Um, but you gotta, you gotta stick and move. I mean, that's that's the name of the game. Yeah, I think at least for me, when I'm out fishing for fun, I like to do that. I like to go somewhere and kind of hang out. Once I find the fish, I'm gonna stay there. But right. I'm not on a time clock, and that's the tough thing about this tournament angling is Good that point. you've got seven hours, Good and point. not only do you gotta catch. The 14 fish but you got to catch 14 good ones so you're you're sorting through fish and getting the ones that you need to get to the weight you need and that was the other thing that was really startling for me and my partner was you know we thought we had some pretty nice bluegills we weren't there as far as crappies we had a couple of good ones but mm -hmm. we weren't able to really fill our crappie bag the way we needed to but we didn't know what our bag weighed until right. they put on the scale and we're like wow right if that's what that weighed, the guys who won this thing must have had just studs in there. And, yeah. that, and that's kind of the thing that separates the people who are really good at this to the people who are like me. Yeah, I think that um, if you talk to, and I do, I talk to people who are good um, that I've seen have success on uh, different tournament fronts. Um, and I ask them, like, what are they doing? And a lot of guys will, will say, well, are you fishing? On, on the day before the tournament um and i go well yeah i mean i want to see what's there and they go well i don't wet a line on saturday you know i'm i'm gonna stay disciplined and do my camera work i'll drill a hole just for the camera and i'll see what's there and i'll move and i'll make my mental notes um, or maybe i'm just looking for the right kind of weeds or the right structure or whatever it is mm -hmm. um but i think uh yeah, I mean, if you're if you're willing to spend the time and you're willing to talk to people and ask them, you know, what works for them, you're gonna learn a ton, and that's the value of it. Yeah. You're gonna learn, and if you if it takes you a year to give, of getting your butt kicked or two, in my case, uh, and, you know, and you apply the knowledge, it can be it can be rewarding. And that that was another thing that was startling for me. And, and you said, did you learn anything? And and I did. And the thing that I learned, I'd never really fished with an underwater camera. Yeah. I was just using sonar. Right. And that's what those guys are doing because they're not wasting time fishing on small fish. Where I drop my sonar in, I see marks. It's going to take me 10 minutes to figure out the fish I'm looking for aren't True. there. True. But those guys are dropping the camera down. They take a look around. Right. The fish that we're looking for aren't here, and then they're moving on, which was cool to see. Right. And, and that was one of those things that you learned, like, all right, if I'm gonna do this, you need a camera to be able to see what's going on. It's true. Um, without without an underwater camera, you're you're handicapping yourself. Um, there, trust me, there are guys who've done really well without one. 
Mm-hmm. They've been in the right spot, at the right time, or they knew the lake really well, and they had you know they were fishing memories, and it worked that day. Um, but I, you know, just like I won't leave home without my Vexlar, I'm not leaving home without my camera either. There's one thing that um, you know uh, I would say don't overlook um, because you're not going to camera every fish that's there. Most people drop their camera down to the bottom of the, of the column. I try to work it all the way down. Um, you know, those high flying fish, sometimes those are the ones that you go right past. They're outside your transducer cone angle, and sometimes you do have to fish two, three feet underneath the ice to see what's truly there. Mm-hmm. So I would just, that's another thing I would say is don't overlook that. Yeah. So we've been talking kind of tournament angling in general for the last five or ten minutes but I want to take you back take us back to Minnesota made and what's you know you guys have been doing it for eight years now what has the evolution of the league been like from year one to starting up here this season well obviously it's, it gets com- more competitive every year because guys um, have more knowledge um, uh, or they <laughs> they just want it more <laughs> um, evolution in the league really um there's been a huge uh change in sponsor sponsorship and support and that's really good for our guys um but really our goal um which is finally starting to come uh, to realization uh jake and i have been looking for um a, just a, a greater cause to partner with for several years and i can't tell you how many times we've met and said what are we going to do who are we going to partner with um <clears throat> to uh help in our in our area or use whatever influence we've got mm-hmm. to for a greater cause um and i think we finally found it this year with hometown hero um and so um when it comes to the league um progressing that's the way we look at it we look at it as a group of ambassadors who are trying to do things the right way um, teach our youth understand and teach selective harvesting but then um, with hometown hero we're going to be partnering with a local um, group of veterans and law enfor- retired uh, law enforcement officers and we're going to be taking them out on the ice this year um, and showing them the tournament experience from our perspective um, so hometown hero is a we're obviously partnering with their minnesota chapter but they're in seven states um, they're a huge group i want to say they're right around 5200 members um, they're here today. I've connected with a bunch of guys. Tony Tessing and uh, Andy Groff are, are guys that we met with and um, just said, hey, this is we want to give to your organization. We've got potentially 60 volunteers who can take you guys out and fish. And on February 1st, which is the Saturday, right before Super Bowl Sunday, um, we're taking them out to Green Lake in Princeton. And we are going to do our best to roll out the red carpet for them and set up a a wonderful tournament experience so they can come out catch bluegills and crappies and hopefully a couple bonus fish and um reward them with you know some prizes from some sponsors traeger's coming out to cook for us it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome so if anybody's listening to this that would be my that would be my plea if you're interested in giving back um, or have the ability, you know, with your company or somebody that you know, um, contact me. <clears throat> um, you can find me on Facebook. Last name is Gazzoni, G-H-I-Z-O-N-I. Um, or reach out to Minnesota Man Outdoors and say, I want to be involved because we're trying to really show these guys a great time. Um, one other thing about that, too, is if you go to minnesotamainoutdoors.com, um, we have apparel that we sell online um really it's um it's just kind of a for fun um but everything every single 100 uh, percent of our profits from now through february 1st goes to hometown hero so um if you're looking for christmas ideas that's where i'm sending you awesome so so what lakes are we fishing this year tell us about the schedule sure um we will be on chisago uh, i've never i've never fished it the uh 
the state championship through Frankie's has been there. Um, there's a lot of fish there. It's going to be a fun time. Um, second tournament is going to be south on something called Mazaska. Um, again, never set foot on it. Looking forward to learning something new. Our third event is Green Lake in Princeton. And our last event is on Clearwater. How do you choose those waters? We vote as a league, um, but really what we need is space. Um, we, we choose them based on uh, how big is the access, uh, where can we fit potentially up to 60 vehicles and trailers. Mm -hmm. um, because if you've ever seen 60 four-wheelers or slowmobiles or side-by-sides leave an access, it can be a spectacle. Yeah, you can uh, watch that on your, you on can your watch Facebook that page too. as well. You can watch that. Um, but really, it's just about safety, size of lake, um, and, you know, where we're not taking up mm -hmm. the entire lake. Because we don't own it. We're not there to do that. Right. So What what event are you looking forward to most, other than, than the one you just talked yeah, about? Yeah, other than Hometown Hero, um, I'm, lear I'm looking forward to, to learning um, and looking at Mazaska more. Uh, but Clearwater is, is, can be awesome. It can be a cold cold you know what but it can also be really rewarding it's a big lake it's big gets big fish um and it can it can be that can be a really fun one awesome it can be tough but it can be fun there's something you wanted to share today that we didn't get a chance to talk about uh no man i i appreciate you giving me the opportunity to to chat and give you the hometown hero plug we're super excited about that um no um i'm thankful to just be down here Representing some of our sponsors today with Clam, Thorn Brothers, Kenders, um, Vexlar. Um, shout out to everybody that's helped us out uh, throughout the way. Um, and, you know, keep watching. Look at Minnesota Made Outdoors. Reach out to us if you have questions, and we're happy to help in any way we can. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. My pre Hey, appreciate my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. You I appreciate you having me, man. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.